I haven't done one of these like favorites and fails videos before, but I thought it might be a good opportunity to get into the habit of doing these once a month. I've got three products on the agenda today, three, three favorites and three fails and also one special mention. Before I get stuck into the video, I just have a little bit of housekeeping to address because I've been getting a few comments about audio quality. From what I can hear when I edit my videos, it sounds normal and it sounds fine to me. So I'm not like intentionally releasing videos that have odd sound. I do have a mic plugged into the phone that I'm using to film and I set the audio to what is supposed to be like broadcast standard. The only thing is I do sit a little bit far back from the mic, so I'm not sure if that's common compromising the sound. Anyway, if you could let me know in the comments if this video is too low, then I'm going to have to try and figure out how to fix it, even though I'm not sure what to do. I think part of the problem is more so balancing the audio, because sometimes I add in like special audio effects that are probably louder than my voice and that creates a bit of like a shock potentially. So I'm working on figuring out how to balance my like natural speaking voice with the added audio. So hopefully it will get better in the next few videos, but I don't take offense. So please do let me know in the comments if there are issues. It's just that I can't necessarily hear them. So I think maybe it's coming from people that are using headphones potentially, but anyway, it's something I know about, I'm trying to fix and I'll continue to try and improve. Let's get straight into the video, favorites and fails. And I'm actually gonna start with fails, beginning with the Eden Cashmere Peer. The brand kindly sent this to me in PR to try, but it just didn't work out. It's touted as a gentle exfoliant with a milky texture. And to be fair, they do market this more towards skin of color is how they phrase it. So I'm clearly not, exactly the target market. In a nutshell, I just found this to be so gentle or too gentle to the point that it was ineffective. And I ended up not viewing it as an exfoliating product at all. I don't mind a gentle toner or a gentle product, but I think just the way they position this product, even in the title, they call it an exfoliating toner and referring to it as a peel. I think that's all just probably pushing the potential impact that this product could have. And I actually don't think it would be able to achieve these sort of grand statements or titles that it's been given. If it can potentially act as an exfoliant or a peel, it would certainly take weeks and weeks if not months to achieve those results and maybe this is just a personal thing but when I consider an exfoliant I'm sort of expecting a fairly quick result or a reasonably quick turnaround for an exfoliating product I'm not looking to wait like two or three months but again maybe that's just me I know there'd be some people out there who would appreciate a sort of slow and steady approach beyond that though I think the actual design of the product is a little bit off to me it feels quite oily and almost like it's leaving a film on my skin basically I don't think it works that, that well I don't like the texture I like the packaging but that's all and, and I definitely would not include this in my routine moving forward I also think they probably sprinkled in a few ingredients like azelaic acid, for example, more so for label claim. There are some ingredients like azelaic that actually do need to be included in a fairly high percentage to exert a skin benefit. Like I can't see how the amount of azelaic that's in this would have really any benefit in the skin. Overall, I don't really understand the product. Uh, more, more so, I don't understand the marketing of the product as a gentle peel because I can't see this being a peel at all. Now, with all that said, to add on a little a bit of a high note I know not everybody is looking for aggressive or super active products so if you do happen to want something extremely gentle then this could be up your alley I would just say that it has more of a moisturizing or nourishing effect not so much exfoliating I do think though that it could potentially help with the appearance of texture because it does kind of have this like plumping effect on the skin I just don't think that's coming from the exfoliation, but rather than moisturization. If you are willing to integrate this in your skincare routine more long-term and over time, then live your best life. I guess I just prefer acids to be a little bit more active, a little bit quicker. Next up on the fails is the Tower 28 SOS Moisturizer. I don't have too much to say on this one because ultimately it's designed to be a fairly basic moisturizer. And put simply, I honestly think I've probably just aged out of this product. When you dispense this product from the tube, it actually looks quite like moisturizing, even slightly pasty. 
but then after it kind of settles into the skin for a moment, it does kind of like break and it ends up feeling a little bit more fluid than it looks. I would compare the sensation on my skin to a gel cream, even though it doesn't look like a gel cream to start. It's certainly not greasy, it's incredibly light, um, but to me, but on my skin, it actually ends up making me look quite shiny. But beyond that, I just don't really feel like it moisturized that well throughout the day. So it was shiny, but not that moisturizing, which is a combo that I do not like. So I mentioned earlier that I've just aged out of this product because I do suspect it would be a good option for younger skins. Maybe if you're sort of teens, early 20s, you're dealing with congestion or you have, you know, dryness issues, but you still want a light texture. I certainly don't have dry skin, but being in my late 30s, I think the balance here is just a little bit off where you can get away with really lightweight moisturization when you're younger. But I think even oilier skins as they age just crave a little bit more kick, you know, in their product. It just feels very humectant forward, but the inclusion part is missing, which is why I suspect it's not enough actual moisturization for me throughout the day. Does that make any sense? I don't know if that makes any sense, but <laughs> anyway. Next is the Blue Azaline Cloud Toner. This is a hydrating toner in one of those self-foaming pumps. This type of format has become a little bit more popular over the last couple of years. At first, I was super excited to try these um, like foaming pump textures. I thought they would make up application much easier but I actually find the foam texture a little bit annoying. The foam does of course burst on the skin to a water but I think that burst actually takes a bit of time until the foam settles and it kind of like applies on the skin in a little bit of an uncontrolled manner because the foam does end up slipping a little bit. That's not like a fault of this product specifically just like a general comment on these foam toners overall. I guess I've just realized that I way prefer using a regular watery toner with like a cotton round just because I can control the application to my liking a little bit more. This toner specifically does tout a bunch of like skin soothing extracts. I only used it for about two weeks roughly and within that period I didn't really notice anything special in terms of a calming effect beyond what a normal hydrating toner would do. But the main reason I actually stopped using it and the main reason it ended up on my fails list is more to do with the texture. I didn't find that this product absorbed very well in my skin. It left quite a bit of a tacky noticeable residue and that's what made me not a fan. Like when I'm using a product especially that early in my skincare routine I want it to be lightweight, weight less unnoticeable just apply and move on this product just slowed down my skincare routine way too much i didn't feel like i would be gaining any benefit considering it felt just like every other hydrating toner in the end ultimately this one is not a bad product it just simply didn't suit my preferences now moving on to my three favorite products of the month i'll start off with the cypher skincare the anomaly eye matrix concentrate Cypher is actually a small brand from Australia and they're an excellent brand for combining a lot of ingredients in a really thought out way. They have a fairly wide range of multifunctional products. The Anomaly Eye Serum pretty much targets all of the key signs of aging around the eye area, as well as things like discoloration, dark circles, and, and even like fatigue and puffiness. And the product features a really awesome blend of ingredients, um, a bunch of skin hydrators, antioxidants, peptides, and even growth factors. The dispenser has this like metal ball at the tip for additional cooling and depuffing. Cypher have also included some more like immediate cosmetic effect ingredients these are like invisible optical blurring ingredients to help smooth the eye contour, just help soften the appearance of fine lines like immediately, while some of the other ingredients are working more long term. There's no like makeup that I can detect or pigments that I can see in here. The ingredients are just more like polymer based. So it's just like this subtle improvement in your eye area without it looking like makeup at all. I am definitely an eye cream lover. It's one of my favorite categories to use and explore and I actually have several in rotation for different purposes. But this one in particular has become a huge favorite, especially to use in the AM considering all of the anti-fatigue. Next up on my favorites list is the Dew Baptism Cleanser. First of all, I love that Dew is offering this in both a fragrance and fragrance 
fragrance free option so it will cater to everybody. I do think these days we're lacking a bit of fragrance options in skincare so whenever I see fragranced options especially in cleansers that always makes me really happy. This is a glycerin rich cleanser with 10% as well as betaine at 2%. The texture is jelly but not too runny and it does end up creating a fairly rich decadent lather. I really like that you can start this on dry skin and then as you work it into your skin and you add a bit of water that's what leads to the lather and foam developing. Because you can start this on dry skin to me it actually ends up working out really well as a single cleanse so if I can't be bothered double cleansing and I've just got some sunscreen on for the day I'll apply this and actually do a fairly long thorough cleanse and it works a treat. And I've never noticed it having any kind of stripping effect on my skin at all. This is ultimately a fairly basic cleanser, but I think they've just refined the properties of a basic cleanser in a way to make it feel a little bit more luxurious. The overall user experience is just like perfect with this one. And the third favorite is the Dr. Sam Bunting Flawless Moisturizer Intense. I also love the original Flawless Moisturizer and I used it religiously when I was starting on Tret. But then I discovered a few other favorite daytime moisturizers like Build B Creams. So the original Flawless just fell out of my, just fell out of my rotation. I was however really happy to see Dr. Sam come out with more of an intense version of that cream. They don't really overlap, they're quite different products. They just share a similar name and I just love that I can integrate this intense version more so as a night cream. The texture of this is almost paste-like to start. It's a little on the thicker side but ends up melting down into the skin very easily and very quickly. It's, despite its richer texture it's actually not overly emollient and because of that it, it has a fairly natural dry down so don't expect to look too oily once you've used this. In fact plenty of people will be able to use this during the day if they prefer. I would say, I would say that it's more of a buttery moisturizer certainly not oily. Some of the ingredient call outs are super interesting to me. Dr. Sam has included some personal favorites like Ectoan and also a hydration complex known as a Quoxal. And they've also included some novel extracts like a sunflower seed extract that's associated with boosting NAD levels in the skin. This has just become a favorite moisturizer for like general skin barrier repair while also giving me the opportunity to include some newer skincare ingredients that hopefully over time exert a benefit. It's like sensible, but still a bit forward thinking. I'll wrap this video with my special mention, and that's the Ordinary Squalane Cleanser. I've included this as a separate category because it's not really a favorite favorite. Um, it's just sort of a situational product. What I mean by that is that it's not the type of cleanser that I would necessarily reach for day to day. Although it has a beautiful smooth texture, I just find that it leaves a bit of residue behind that is a bit challenging for me to remove. So I do prefer things that normally rinse a little bit cleaner. But where this cleanser really thrives is as a travel product. The packaging is just super convenient. It's very lightweight and the tube packaging allows for super easy dispensing without it getting messy. And of course it's not bulky at all. So it just slots into all like toiletry pouches super easily and efficiently. You know how a lot of balm cleansers have kind of clunky and large packaging. This sort of solves a lot of those problems. So if you're going on any type of trip, this is a no brainer to have in those situations, especially even if you, even if like me, you might not love the product as a standalone like daily cleanser. I think in certain situations, it definitely ticks all the boxes. That's it for this September summary video. Let me know if you have any questions or feedback in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video.